In the last couple of years, I've really embraced the idea of AI, especially when it comes to some of these AI tools, like these AI chat assistants and uh, generative AI tools. I've really kind of embraced this stuff because I see how incredibly useful and how beneficial these AI tools are. And I know a lot of people for whatever reason, especially in the free and open source software community, a lot of people criticize AI. They have a very negative opinion of it. They don't want AI to exist. Well, guess what, guys? Unfortunately, I live in reality. AI exists. It will always exist, and it will only grow bigger as far as more important in our lives. And I'm, I embrace reality, right? I, I don't like to live in fantasy land. I'm not going to pretend like AI is not a thing. So I like playing with these tools. I love playing with things like these chat assistants, like ChatGPT, or for those of you that want an open source alternative, what I've really gravitated to recently has been Llama. But you know, a couple of weeks back, I was on the No Tux Allowed podcast, which is hosted by Big Pod and Josh Lee. And they were asking me, uh, about some of the AI tools that I use. And it was all about the chat assistants. And they asked me, did I use any like generative AI uh, image generators, right? And, and I didn't. I have never played with any of that stuff until here recently. Now, you guys that were paying attention probably noticed on one of my recent videos, I actually used a AI model to actually generate this image. This image here, uh, three ways to try Linux before making the switch. This image was created using Dolly. And a lot of people spotted that I used uh, Dolly to make this image because I got a ton of negative comments. People were like, oh my God, DT, I can't believe you used AI to create a thumbnail. You used AI slop to create a thumbnail. You're a horrible person, DT. AI sucks. You suck. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So uh, first of all, uh, the term AI slop, obviously, you know, the slop, these people, it's, it's like basically they're saying that my AI images are basically akin to spam when they call AI generated images slop. It has a negative connotation. They're trying to be derogatory, right? They're basically saying, hey, you used a, a garbage image. You know, these aren't even real images and they're just slop, right? They're spam, they're trash. And you know what? I thought the image was very good. I spent like 30 seconds asking Dolly to make that image for me. And I thought it was a nice image, but apparently people hated it. I don't understand why. Now, I've only been playing with Dolly for really just a few days, and I'm impressed, uh, so impressed, I wanted to share a little bit about Dolly with you guys if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, again, I'm no expert. It's kind of new to me, but Dolly is uh, it's actually an AI system that is created by OpenAI. OpenAI is the same company that created ChatGPT, so it's the same folks behind ChatGPT. They had an older model of Dolly called Dolly 2, which when you clicked on Try Dolly, You'd go to this site and you could search through random images that it generates, you know, or you can uh, go through collections of images and then you can modify the images. And this was kind of neat, but it was also kind of limited on some of the resolutions that they had. But they have a new model out now called Dolly 3. And if you want to try Dolly 3, all you need to do is actually uh, sign up for Dolly 3. And now when you log in to ChatGPT, you have the option to choose between ChatGPT, which is of course, your chat assistant and Dolly, which is the image generator. And I've got some of my recent uh, requests for images over here. If I take a look at the request I did to create that uh, thumbnail the other day, you can see what I asked Dolly. I said, create an image that includes screenshots from at least four different distros. Now, let me zoom in so you can actually read the text here. And uh, Dolly responded that they can't use real screenshots. They can't use real photographs. It's got to be uh, actual art that it creates on the fly. Uh, you can give it certain styles. For example, if you want a comic book look, or you can see down here, Impressionism, Origami, Comic Book, Ink Wash, Folk Art. There's like hundreds of, of different uh, styles you can ask it. You can ask it to do ceramic art or uh, steampunk, you know, whatever. And if you want some ideas, you can actually click this button and keep getting ideas. Pixel art, expressionism, motion blur, uh, graffiti, mirrored glass. Anyway, you can pick a style if you want. For me, I didn't even ask it for a specific style. I just said create an image with, that includes screenshots from at least four Linux distros. And then it gave me a couple of examples. It gave me two examples to choose from in case I liked one more than the other. 
And without me giving it specific distros to represent in the thumbnail, it picked Ubuntu, Fedora, Linux, Mint, and Arch, which I thought was kind of cool that it picked four, obviously, of the biggest distributions as far as popularity on Linux, right? Especially desktop Linux. Like, if I would have picked four desktop Linux distros to make a thumbnail out of, I probably would have picked the exact same four distributions, so that was very nice. One thing to note with the images, they come in three different uh, resolutions, uh, and, and you can specify Dolly to give you the resolution you want. It comes in a square resolution, a perfect square image. I think it's 1024 by 1024, but it also has a wide uh, resolution. I think it's 1792 by 1024 or something, and then it has the opposite, 1024 by 1792 as far as a tall layout. Out, and you can specify the layout or the resolution on these images if you want. Let me actually do an example image generation here. Let's imagine I am doing a video about Emacs. So let's create an image of a computer running Emacs in a steampunk style. This should be fun. And I didn't specify whether it do a square format or a wide format. I'll just let it choose whatever resolution it sees fit in this case. It's going to take a few seconds, maybe a minute or two, to generate an image. And it generates the images, two different images. And, uh, well, these are actually not bad. I do like the steampunk uh, computer here, right? Uh, now, obviously, you can't really read anything on the screen, so obviously these AI-generated images, like, you really can't tell what's going on on this computer. There's no way you would ever be able to tell that that is actually Emacs running on a computer. Uh, this one is a little bit more legible, uh, but not really. You really can't tell what's going on, so uh, for purposes of, like, showing Emacs on a computer, you know, this is not great. Like this is, I probably wouldn't create a thumbnail of an Emacs video using Dolly, right? I would just take a screenshot of my actual computer uh, running Emacs anyway. But, you know, this was just an example here. A better example would be uh, creating an image of a fictional person doing something. For example, create an image of a hacker sitting at a computer in ceramic art style and it's generating the image and there you have it now, obviously this is a, a much better kind of image here and i just think this is neat I don't know why people <laughs> have something against these AI generated images. I, they're, they're neat, right, man? These are uh, styles of images that you normally wouldn't get. Like, I, I can create images myself. I, I obviously have made thousands of thumbnails on my YouTube channels over the years. I can take pictures of myself for a thumbnail. I take pictures of my desktop or screenshots of my computer. I can go grab stock photographs off a stock photo website. You know, if I want a photograph of, you know, something that, you know, I don't have the capability of taking a photograph of that particular thing. I can go grab stock photos to use for thumbnails. But, you know, sometimes you want to create really unique art. And that's where a project like Dali, I, mean, I love these things. And again, I don't understand the resistance to these tools. Now, will I continue to use Dolly to create my thumbnails? Uh, yes and no. I, I think in some cases and some circumstances, you know, I could create some really interesting thumbnails for certain topics of videos using Dolly. But I would say for 95% of my videos, I don't need Dolly to create a thumbnail. I, do, I just don't think it would be appropriate for most of my thumbnails. But I would certainly use Dolly on occasion. Now, for me, I like free and open source software, and kind of like with ChatGPT, now we have open source alternatives to ChatGPT, such as Olama. You know, eventually we're going to get some open source alternatives to DALI, you know, some of this AI generative uh, image tooling. You know, we're going to get some open source alternatives to that. And, and I can't wait for the open source implementations. Maybe there's some already out there I'm just not aware of. I really haven't explored this avenue uh, very much because I'm far less concerned about creating AI generated images or AI generated video than I am with uh, the chat assistants because I find like the tech stuff, I find that much more useful in my day-to-day -day work. But again, AI is the future. In so many areas of our life, 
AI is infiltrating those areas of our life and will continue to infiltrate more areas of our life. So if you're one of these people that are resisting AI, at some point you have to embrace it. You just have to embrace reality. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daylist, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenrin, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This episode about image generation with Dali, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and open source software and occasionally proprietary software like Dali, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.